my name is Ratsani. Welcome back to Slay the Spire Modern. We're going to be playing Slay the Spire Modern. I just said... Come on! Seriously, it was like three seconds before. And we're going to be playing with a different mod list here. Now, this is not a permanent change to the mod list. This is not the permanent mod list, the permanent mod rotation. Uh, the mods that have been taken out of this mod list are not essentially or permanently out of the series. It's just there's a lot of stuff going on. At the moment, I had 28 mods installed at the time, and with all of those overlapping things, not only was I occasionally running into, uh, like, cross-mod incompatibilities, well, not incompatibilities, but bugs that would arise out of interactions between different things that exist in different mods, uh, but also, I was incapable of seeing a lot of the content in the mods because I had so many other mods that the floor two event pool would just pull from so many different events. Think in a standard run of Slay the Spire, that is to say a non-modded run of Slay the Spire, you go to the second floor, and when I go to the second floor and I go to question marks, I'm calling out the events that I want to see. I'm like, I want to see the beggar because I want a card removal. I want to see Cursed Tome because I want to get a Necronomicon or an Anchoridian, depending on the deck, those kinds of things. You can make informed decisions about what you want to do based on the probability that you will get an outcome that you expect. That does not necessarily exist when you have so many different things installed. Not only for events, but also for potions, for cards, especially for the base characters, because a lot of the kind of like kitchen, uh, kitchen sink expansion mods would introduce 10, 15 new cards for the base characters. The base characters by base have 75 cards, so I would have characters that had almost 200 cards in them which made it really, really difficult to make consistent decks with reasonable archetypes because there were just a lot of different combo pieces for the builds that each different designer wanted to add into their content mod. And all of that is fine, but I'd like to pare back the experience for a little bit of a moment, especially because I recently installed Aspiration. And this episode, Aspiration being a major content mod, uh, and this episode, I'm going to be introducing another major content mod, and I would like to actually be able to engage with their content, uh, rather than just occasionally see them between all of the other things in the base game and every other mod that I had installed at the time. So I only have seven mods currently installed. Uh, we have base mod, STS lib, and then I've got the quality of life, so those two just have to be there, right? I have the quality of life mods of uh, Colored Map, Relic Sorter, and Unknown Chances. And then I have Aspiration that I introduced a, I want to say about 20 episodes ago now. And then finally down here, the new one that is getting included now by Dark Vexen and Saitea, a minor content mod. That's a little bit of an understatement. I have seen the description of the amount of stuff that this includes. Uh, and this is going to be the new mod we're running, Vex Mod. Let's have a look has no settings yet. Okay, good to know. So yeah, no characters are currently installed. So I will be playing one of the base characters. And this in particular is why I felt it was important to pair back on those mods so that I could actually play the cards of the base characters and build reasonable, reliable decks. Uh, for anyone who heard me going off on a rant at the very start of the episode and skipped ahead five minutes, I'll see you in one minute and 20 seconds. Um... Let's do Ascension 15. Greetings now. Mm, okay. Nothing doing so far. All right, let's have a look at this path. So... It's Ascension 15, so I don't necessarily want to hunt all of these elites. But I don't necessarily not want to hunt all of these elites either. So... Hmm. There's actually four upgrades and two elites on this path. Three midline upgrades, right? I refer to them as midline upgrades because there's always one at the end of each line. But that's that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's, uh, let's upgrade that bash to give us more aggressive potential in the early game. Healing six at the end of the combat. Got to remember that. Got him. Uh, yeah. I'll take an inflame. Sure. Hell, I'm happy to. Um, should probably be inflamed double defend here. Since there's only one enemy on the field and they occasionally 
take turns not to attack. I ought to be able to just wait for a safe turn. Or I should have been able to, but that draw was pretty horrendous. Strength potion as well as anger headbutt. I'll take an anger. I already have a inflame in the deck. The correlation there being that having the inflame in the deck means that having a bunch of small attacks is quite good because I get to apply the damage from strength constantly. Okay, so 22 in the front line. I've got 24's worth of damage here. Yeah, that's the wrong order, but I still have lethal next turn. I was very much hoping I was just going to draw lethal that turn, but since I was weakened, that was not going to happen. Okay, Blood to Gold. This is from Vex Mod. Lose 3 HP, gain 10 gold, draw a card. Do I take the Reaper now and then I take Blood to Gold later? I think I do that. Not that I can necessarily force Blood to Gold to exist later. Okay, so Brain Blaster, also from Vex Mod. All enemies start battle reactive. That is a... What? So it's marked as though it would have a tooltip, as though it's a keyword, but it doesn't have that keyword. So I don't know what it does. I'm going to take the Pummel because it's on deep discount. There's also Headsman's Axe. Whenever you reduce a non-boss enemy below 10% of their max HP. Their max HP. Their HP with an attack, kill them. Every time I read the word HP, my brain auto-fills max in there. And I know that's not necessarily always the case. In fact, it rarely is. But it just happens. I don't know how to stop it. Well, I guess a drill bit and some determination. But I don't think I'm going to be doing that one anytime soon. Unfortunately, Reaper was at the absolute bottom of this deck, so... It's going to be a while before I get back to it. Alright, fine. I'll just kill. Bloodguard. Lose 4 HP, gain 16 block upgrades to 3 and 18. 3 and 18 for 1. Consider it like this. If this card gave you, say, three less block. So one for 15. This would block fully against an attack that does 15 damage. Yes, I know, it's a truism, whatever, right? But if something attacks you for 18, you would take three damage. So if this completely blocks your enemy's attack, Within the HP value of 0 to 3 being the excess you're blocking by, this is still saving you a lot of HP. Is that a good way to think of this? Oh! God! There's a rupture in the previous store! I obviously should have taken that. Flex, Anger, both of those make sense right now. I'm taking Blood Guard. I'm playing with new cards. Getting flame upgraded. Ah, Gremlin Knob. Good to see you. Do I Blood Guard here? That's only eight incoming. I don't think I do. Enraging the enemy is risky business here. All right, so seven is 24. 24, 28. Seven by four, 28. Just straight up flexing my ability to do very rudimentary math. Uh, ancient T-Set, whenever you go to a rest site, start the next combat with two extra energy. We'll take the fear potion over the dex potion there. That's another anger. You know what? Let's go all the way. Upgrade that blood guard. Specifically lowering the HP loss is important. Shifting skin. At the start of each combat, gain one stack of any random positive ability. Ability. Not a buff. Ability. What is an ability in this game? Because there's powers. Buffs are technically coded as powers. 
Is it a buff? I'm assuming it's a buff. No, it's a power. Sadistic. Whenever you play a debuff to an enemy, deal one damage? What? Okay, so it doesn't give me the power sadistic. It gives me one of the, or rather one stack of the buff that Sadistic grants the player. Yeah, that's a, I do not envy Vex. That is not an easy thing to word. Very good opening turn there. Only could have been better if I had an inflame in it. Oh! Oh, yes. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I like it. All right. Well, Rupture is now like a high, high priority for my deck. I'll come back to that pummel. I don't want to kill, like, I don't want to hit an enemy and then they heal at the end of this turn and then I don't kill them. They heal at the end of the next turn, right? So, I'm going to delay effectively beginning the combat for a bit. Well, at least our draw pile is pretty good. Sweet. Anything kills the sentry next turn. Heck, a stiff breeze would get the job done. Heal by three, 37, so 28. So yeah, just these attacks is fine. Boom. Incense burner. Every six turns gain one intangible. There's also an emerald key and blaze potion. Two stacks of any random positive ability. Okay, so this is a common thing that happens in the game. Might be worth a keyword then. Don't want to take any of those though. Mm -mm. Sorry. There's not a shop soon enough, and this deck relies far too heavily, almost definitely too heavily, uh, on its ability to deal a bunch of damage suddenly. Really disappointed about the fact that I'm about to be weakened by the Acid Slime. It's going to significantly lower the impact of this Reaper. Okay, though. It happens. Battle Trance is difficult to turn down. But heck, it's easy to upgrade. Incense Burner. Okay, so next turn I have Intangibility, at least. Oh, Heat Sink. Okay, so... We'll look at what it pulls before I have more of discussion about that. Because, like, I was thinking any random buff, but I guess, like, if it gave me one point of strength, that's like it trying to give me one positive ability from Inflame. So maybe it's word as ability because it excludes the set of things that are buffs in the base. I said I was not going to talk about it until I had a little bit more information by having continued to play. I have very recently, in fact, uh, made some off the cuffs, uh, off the cuffs. Yeah, no, I was swearing like a madman <laughs> back in the old days of Rhapsody. Back in those early thousand or so videos when I used to swear that much. It's actually probably like the first 3,000 videos on this channel that I used to swear a lot. Uh, but no, at a point, didn't I? At a point. Right, yeah, uh, th there was... Uh, a moment recently where I said something off the cuff that just was extremely wrong. It was just not like against nature wrong. Like it was more of a oh, oh nice ball. Uh, it was more of a I relied on my instincts rather than just waiting a moment and just learning something. Hell, I think it actually happened a couple of times in that episode. To avoid that, if possible. I've already taken damage in this combat. Oh, fine. Just gotta kill the enemy. Mm 
Very glad that I got Reaper on this turn in particular. I'm obviously hoping for... I'm obviously hoping for Limit Break or... No, not even Demon Form. Just Limit Break, thank you. Or a new card. It's a second Reaper. That's hard to turn down, yo. No longer being able to take any potions is rough, but not being able to open chests is rough -er. I think this locks me out of less new content. It's not that I wouldn't be able to open chests at all. It's just I likely wouldn't. All right. Well, I don't need to hover over these, right? Because they are actually distinct from one another. Thank you, coloring mod. I'll start here. See where that gets me. I started with thorns. And yeah, that's one stack of caltrops. These enemies take six damage this turn at the very least. Hey! Blood Guard completely defends us just with that one card. I, I'm into it. I'm like really into it. Single Reaper is not a large heal here because the enemies are still up. And also because I haven't got my flame out yet. So I prevented an enemy from dealing six damage to itself, but I put it on the ground, lowering its damage, preventing it from buffing this turn as well. You on the ground also. Definitely double defend. I'll strike there. Okay, so we're, now we're set up for like an inflame reaper turn. Ugh. Typical. How dare the game not give me the inflame reaper after I described that it would be helpful. Oh, there's the Reaper. I think I just double Reaper this turn. Thank you. I'll be taking all of that HP. Rupture, whenever you lose HP from card game with strength. Yep. All right, we're doing strength and HP loss as the build. Ground pound, deal. What on earth is this? I can't even read it when it's pulled up because of the tooltips. Okay. Hang on, you're gonna have to give me a second here. No, 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 no. No, I was trying to... I wasn't trying to buy it. I'll almost certainly end up buying it, but give me a second. I need to, like, actually lean into my screen to read this. Deal five damage, gain five block, gain five gold, apply two weak, apply two vulnerable, apply two poison, draw two cards, heal two HP, gain five block next turn, gain one energy next turn, draw one more card next turn, exhaust a card, in, oh, sorry, upgrade a card in your hand, exhaust. And then upgrading this, six, 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 three, 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 six, one, one. It looks like uh, the rest of the ones is in the bottom three modifiers here don't change. That, like, the numbers are very low, but maybe it's incredible just because it does so many things. Okay. Apply, deal five damage, deal five, uh, gain five block. Also, by the way, this is actually, uh, this is a great example of a thing that I got wrong last, uh, last episode. Iron Wave and Dash give you block before they deal damage. Basically, I've been looking at those cards, looking at their card art, and then just imagining their effects rather than actually reading the text of Iron Wave and Dash for so long that I thought that there was a misordering in one of the cards in the Anomaly mod, uh, which there wasn't. I was just wrong. I just needed to take a little bit longer to think about it. Uh, but here, this is actually the wrong order according to the design standard already set by the game. Specifically because uh, gaining block before dealing damage allows you to prevent uh, incoming damage from effects like thorns. Gain five gold, two weak, two vulnerable, two poison, draw two cards. That doesn't mean anything on a card that costs three, right? Your Most of your energy is already spent. So heal two, eh. Gain five block next turn, draw one extra... 
gain one extra energy next turn, draw one more card next turn, and upgrade a card in your hand. Upgrading a card in your hand is a low effect. Okay, let's start ruling out the things that aren't particularly impactful. Gain five gold is not particularly impactful. Uh, upgrade a card in your hand is not particularly impactful. Gain five block next turn is not particularly impactful. Heal two HP is not particularly impactful. Yes, I know that together they make a better than the sum of their parts, but would I do 5-5 five, five for damage and block and then weakness, vulnerability, and poison? As well as gaining an extra energy next turn. Maybe. I don't know. I think this is a card that I can't evaluate just because of how many different things are on it. I'm not taking it, though. I'm taking Combust. It provides us AoE in a deck that has a little bit of it, but doesn't have it at the start of the fight, and it synergizes with Rupture. I mean... Okay. Uh, let's also look at the Relics. Keychain. Your first attack each combat shackles its target for the damage dealt. Again, shackles is not a keyword here, so it doesn't really explain what this does, but I'm already familiar with shackles from the base game. Uh, it is the effect that is applied to your enemy with Piercing Whales, but also the card that it takes its name from, Dark Shackles. Uh, it is a temporary lowering of strength. Frozen Jewel. At the end of your turn, gain two block for every... Every. At the end of your turn, gain two block for every enemy that it tends to attack. Uh, I actually can't do that accent at all. It's supposed to be New Zealand, though. Uh, gain Blur. Actually, you know what? I should have just said, ah, I can't do that accent at all. It's supposed to be Scottish. Uh, gain Blur. If there are multiple enemies that all intend to attack. Uh, three. Well, I don't think I'm going to be in that position often. Right, because I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite aggressive. I take out the enemies quite quickly. Yeah. All right, I'll go with Combust and I'll start just speaking my own voice. <laughs> I want the real Rhapsody voice. Yes, this is me, Rhapsody. No, I said the real Rhapsody voice. What's up? It's uh, Rhapsody. I used to sound more like this. Kind of more <clears throat> Orca Strine. Like uh, much more what you think of when you think of an Australian accent. The kind of thing that won't get Americans telling me that, uh, that I'm not Australian, that I kind of sound British. I'm not. Although I actually didn't drop the T's from my initial. Like, I'm, I'm definitely over-exaggerating it for the example of that, but that's... I know. You can change if you want to. Or if you grow up watching almost exclusively British <laughs> comedy and dramas and, uh, and don't socialize as a child. All right, let's upgrade all strikes and defense just because we have so many of them still left in the deck. They're quite powerful. Take a special relic. Get that three strength on turn one. I, okay, I've never been dissatisfied to draw. Oh, I have a stack of fire breathing. Cool. I have never been dissatisfied drawing blood guard. It's pretty good, I think. I'm pretty sure it's really good. 95% so. Cardboard shield. Gain block equal to the number of the cards in your draw pile. Okay, so it's the inverse of... of stack. The upgrade. Plus three. It's literally the inverse of stack. Okay. I'll take the sword boomerang. It's a good damage... Uh, it's, a, it's a good way to apply damage with the strength deck. No, I got one metallicized. Blood God! You didn't have to, but I'm glad you did. Oh, uh, yikes. <laughs> well, you win some, you lose some. At the very least, we've got intangibility this turn. very uncomfortable playing Reaper that hand when I know Inflame is still in the deck. Right. 
Definitely in flame. Probably Bash Anger Sword Boomerang. So Anger will be 16. Sword Boomerang will be 9 by 4. 9 by 4 is 36. 16, 36 is 52. 52, 13 is 65. Now this is... So after I... If I use a Strength Potion, I should gain 3 damage on all of the post bash. Stuff, right? Yeah, that'll be lethal. But do I need to do it? I do. Could I every time we play three attacks in a single turn, gain one dex? Well, now we want to consider things like Iron Wave. Uh, previously, I wouldn't have put it in the deck because it's not aggressive enough, but it will carry also a fair bit of defense here. We've already removed two strikes from the deck. We can't take a perfected strike at this point. Far too late for that. Sharp orbs. At the end of your turn, deal one damage to a random enemy for each orb you have. All right, I guess. That's pretty cool, though. I have no orbs. Why did it deal one damage to a random enemy? Okay. Well, I prevent 10 damage, but I take 6 more because of the other target on the board. At very least, I've got Reapers left in the deck. Right, setting up for a Reaper here. Okay, there's Reaper number 1. Probably should have Battle Trance before I played... <laughs> I might get the second Reaper off this turn, if I'm lucky. I'm not. But, I'll be able to stall for one more turn until I do get it off. I'll then give her that one. What the hell? Um. Okay. Someone just randomly messaging me on Steam. I'm not into that. That's why I almost always go offline. I was playing a uh, online game recently, though, and had to go online. Uh, the person messaging me is a content creator as well, so like 100% they know I'm working. Uh, I'm just going to offline and probably deal with that later. 3 HP, 10 gold, draw a card. Yup. It's a point of strength for us. I'll use a Reaper this turn. We, ooh, we do have Venom as well. Neat. When you apply an unblocked attack damage, apply one poison. Yeah, I'm not, a, not crazy about this turn. that was lame. You're really gonna do me dirty like this video game? On a... What day is it? When this comes out. Okay, so it should be my day today for yours because I technically live in the future compared to the majority of you. Not technically. Not even at all. Just for the memes I live in the future. Typically is said at the very least. I don't know what day it is today. <laughs> I can't tell you for the life of me. <laughs> Law bank. When you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. It no longer works when you spend any gold at shop. Look, most people situate how they know what day it is by how recently did I work and am I going to be working soon, right? Weekends, as we call them colloquially. Um, I, uh, I don't really get <laughs> weekends. I just do this every day. Let's get us some HP. All right, so I've got the the bomb. At the end of this turn, deal one damage to all enemies. 
So that's not from a power, but... <laughs> ah, that's wild as hell. <laughs> one damage bomb. No one's intimidated by that, I'm afraid to say. No one at all. Don't get me wrong, I love doing this every day. I, I apologize if it sounded otherwise. It's just, I don't really know when the weekends are. <laughs> I think that's fine though, right? Okay. I'm gonna Blood Guard. Grimmel is trying to do a lot of damage to me. Good. I did draw the Blood Guard back. I was very hopeful that was going to be the case. And that's a goodbye to the Gremlin Leader. Now show me super capacitive coin. Right click during combat to activate. Consume all charges and deal three damage to random enemy for each. Gain one charge every time you gain gold. That's actually particularly good for us. Uh, due to the fact that we have blood for gold, so we're gaining a little bit more gold for it. Draining Doom. Deal 30 damage, lose 5 max HP. 40. Exhaust Ethereal. I think if I was halfway through the last floor, I would take this. Right, because like in, in, in those fights, like especially in the boss fight at the very end of the third floor, uh... As soon as you lose HP, you're probably not gaining it back. So you might as well convert the empty max HP into damage. But... I can't rely on that. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing that. Not now, at least. Ron Scales started to combat with three thorns. Eh, it's fine. We hope not to really get attacked that many times in a combat, so... Hopefully it's not relevant for us. We have feel no pain. Whenever a card is exhausted, gain one block. Not that great. Ooh. My one block there. That turn could have been brutal if I didn't have that one block looking out for me. Double reaper, double reaper, double reaper. Uh, got one at least. Toxic Egg, when you've got a skill card to your deck, upgrade it or a dinky donkey in power. Do I take the Shrug it off just for defense? I don't think I do. I think I just go ham. Let's go straight up John. He killed the frontliner. Heal me back to full. I'm fine with both of those. Uh, yikes. Thank you for the kill, though. Second Battle Trance in a deck of 22 cards. I'll take it, but I'm not happy about it. If one Battle Trance draws the other Battle Trance, yes, they're anti-synergistic, but... I still drew three cards. Even minus the card value of the Battle Trance I drew initially, I still drew two. So if this just more consistently allows me to play a Battle Trance, it should still be worth it. Up to a point. 15. Uh, getting more gold from that doesn't really matter. I'll take the Combust, I think. So no damage is in here on turn one. Should have played the blood to gold first. The reason I played the uh, the battle trance before the blood to gold is because I was hopeful I was going to draw rupture, but I should have played the blood to gold first because I can't draw any more cards after I play the battle trance. 
Um, again, I'm totally fine with that, but I hadn't considered, hey, the deck is 23 cards large. I'm probably not going to draw Rupture, so I might as well just draw as deep down in the deck as I can, right? I effectively was trying to high roll there for basically no good reason. Looks like I started with a point of dex here, I think. Leave that Reaper in. Hmm. I prioritize my defense right now. Yeah, I'll drop a Reaper happily. These Angers are gonna get a bit of a problem for us, but. I do think I just kind of lean into that. Okay, so the enemy is buffing itself this turn. I have weakness, frailty, not frailty, but I have weakness and vulnerability. The enemy buffs, then they purge, then they attack, so I won't have the frailty. Frailty, not frailty. I won't have the weakness and vulnerability. Good to know. It's also worth noting that the more bank is actually currently feeding the super capacitive coin as well, so. Yay. I wasn't even thinking about the effect of the incense burner possibly going off on this turn, but I should have. Harder to plan around that one though. All right. Nate, this fight could have gone a lot worse for us. We drew really well. Pretty happy about it. Okay. Obviously, Juggernaut's probably out of the picture here. Curse Blast, deal 25 damage. If this doesn't kill an enemy, add a random curse to your deck. Upgrades to 35. So bad for boss fights, good for floor fights. Am I better in floor fights or boss fights? I'm already better in floor fights than I am in boss fights. So I don't need that. Devastation, lose six, eight, uh, lose six HP, deal damage equal to your missing HP. Upgrades to three. If I had a lot of max HP, that would make sense. But I don't. I can't take either of those either. Okay. Endless Sickness, gain energy at the start of your turn. At the start of each combat, shuffle a virus into your draw pile. Virus is not a keyword. I don't know what it is. Also, Virus in Infinite Spire is a black card. Like, an ultra-powerful card. Devious Bottling. Gain energy at the start of your turn. Torments you at random occasions in unique ways. It gives me no information about what it does. Well, only one way to find out, I guess. Read the code, but uh, without doing that, I should probably just pick it up. I don't need to save 12 with a super capacitive coin here, it's fine. One HP for the kill. That triggered, apparently. Devious Bottling triggered. What happens? Uh... I can't tell you. Alright. Um... I, I guess, like, I'll take an Infernal Blade. It's pre-upgraded, sure. I don't want it in the deck, but it'll help me front load a lot of damage. Ooh, Carnage. High rolled it. At random occasions in unique ways. 
I got confused? Was that from... I don't know what the devious bottling is doing is the problem here. Ed. I'm not going to say that's not apt for a description. Why am I still confused? Is it not just a single turn? Is this just me from now on? Did I just Sneko my Deco? Thirty-two. Okay. I am also just rolling really badly with these. God, you know what? No, I'm using the super capacity coin this time. It's awful. Um, yeah, I'm just rolling really, really poorly with the random costs. Uh, thread and needle started combat with four plated armor. I don't even take a flex. And, eh, I do. Because I have the two battle trances, I can offset the card negativity of playing the flex. The card cost of playing the flex, not its negativity, right? Its negativity is if I was talking about it with respect to its drawing potential. Enlightenment, Impatience, and Flash of Steel. Impatience is difficult to play. Let's take a Flash of Steel, I think. Enlightenment can hit Bash and two Reapers. That's very, very, very little. Let's take that Flash of Steel. 603 gold for a random relic. I don't think I'm going to do that one. Should probably spend mine here, though. Charger Upper. Every time you gain 35 block, gain one strength. Every time. Okay, so that persists between fights. Yeah, I guess. Right, well, let's start off by removing probably the unupgraded anger here. That does get to be a little much. I'll take the charger up. I'll take the Omomori. Probably not the prismatic shard. Uh, just hold. Yeah, I'll hold for this. These. All right, elite number one. Show me what you got. Vulnerability in early as well. Eh, it's okay. I mean, I get four block every single turn, so Charger Upper has already got that going for it. 35 seems high, but I suspect that it isn't, and that it just seems that way at the moment, but in practice, it will be much more effective than I am going to... Yeah. Or not to and give it credit for. Should have played the extra battle trance there. Would have got a wee bit more damage out. There's another point of strength for me. What'd you do, Devious Botling? At the end of your turn, take four damage and this wears off. You just dealt me incoming damage. Okay. Sure, I guess. Just gonna casually max heal back up, if you don't mind. And if you do mind, I'll do it twice. Corruption? Yo. It's time to start getting corrupts. In particular, because we do not live long in this combat past this point, so I will need to get all of the value from those cards, and I'm probably not even going to get into my next cycle. Yeah. Not even getting into the next cycle. Beautiful. Dream catch whenever you rescue mana cards to your deck. Again, Devious Botling says a trigger this turn. What did it do? Insult. Apply one... Uh, X plus one weak... X plus one vulnerable and gain X plus one strength. So played for zero. This is one weak, one vulnerable, one strength on myself. Well, the weak and vulnerable to being on the target. That's really good. But does it scale up? One for two, two, two. Yeah, it does. It does. It scales up. 
It's just it doesn't scale up specifically with respect to the strength later. Uh, I could heal to full and take that down. It's probably not a good idea for us. We definitely don't want to not be able to heal from now on. I'm assuming, yeah. Thank you. Devious Bottling showed up on top of the head of the Devious, uh, of the Shield Gremlin. That is really important. Signaling to the player why something happened. Should have done that in the opposite order, obviously. But I feel good about that. Now I know. Clever Clash. If the enemy intends to attack, gain block. Otherwise, deal nine damage. Yeah. Well. I'll save it until I can deal. So oh, no. I should gain the block. Judge Rapa. I mean, it wasn't doing any damage for me there. I definitely should have just gained the block. Yes, those were misordered. I could have dealt with a bit more damage. I forgot that I wasn't going to be able to draw there. I immediately forgot the downside of Battle Trance. Let's play that first. Go for a giant insult. Your parents. Well, one of them was a rodent. The other one... Oh, I don't even want to... Speak about the scent they emit. Looks like it was an effective insult. Thank you, Reaper. Turned up at exactly the right time. Get my full heal. Fossilized Helix. Prevent the first time you lose HP in combat. It's probably still good, right? Because I'll lose HP before I get Rupture. But it could be negative. Depending. Uh, training strike. Deal six damage. Increase the damage of a random attack in your hand. Or this by two. Or this. Okay, so does it try and find a random attack in your hand? And then if it can't, it upgrades itself? So like a worse rampage in that second circumstance? Or does it randomly have the ability to hit any random attack in your hand or itself? Because then you can't really use it for combo circumstances. Like, that would be really good with Pummel. If I could guarantee that it hit Pummel. Really? Yeah, the fact that Devious Botling can just randomly confuse me and summon enemies in the same turn, weird, uh, means I'm probably just never going to take it again unless I have a deck where I want to be confused or I'm already really powerful. I mean, the weakness and vulnerability would only last the t current turn, right? So... At least we're not getting the world's worst hit here. That is to say, we're not getting the absolute worst rolls of confusion that we could. Very good turn to be intangible, I'll tell you that much. Just spare out a giant insult to my enemy. You know what you did. Okay. Damage? Oh, this is so frustrating. Every time the enemy is not intangible, I have very little damage in my hand. Every time they're intangible, guess what I have? What? An ice cream? Why'd you say damage? That doesn't make any sense. You need to go back to thinking school and take some remedial classes. And yes, that is wholesale stolen from... Uh, or rather, that turn of phrase in particular is wholesale stolen from Paula Tompkins. Sumi is one of my favorite people in the world. Well-worn anklet. 
The start of turns three and seven gain seven block. Uh, intimidate deal wield. I guess like I could deal wield rupture or combust or the results of an infernal blade or flash of steel or pummel or in flame. I would be happy. I have a lot of hits with that. Still got to dig up the paper on this one. I don't understand the reference. Let's actually have a look at the text. A mysterious arcade coin that can store large amounts of electricity. If enough is created, maybe you can create a rail gun. Uh, your body flows fluidly, changing to adapt to each situation. Just the modded ones. Charger upper. Oops, I fell asleep without plugging it in again. Yeah, not familiar. Centennial puzzle the first time you lose HP, each combat, draw three cards. Well, yes. Now, the da, 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 fossilized helix is a little bit of a problem for us. Sweet. <clears throat> All right, Darkling in the back line. That could have gone a lot better. Very little AoE in this deck. Strike Storm. Ethereal, whenever you play a non-attack card, play a strike. <laughs> I like it. Let's go. Okay, so the strike does inherit my strength. That's really good to know. It does say play A, but... It's worth double-checking. That's a really powerful card. Uh, da, da, da. Another pummel. Good lord, I'm getting mad pummels. On a Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> I remember what day it was. Told you I would. I didn't say I would, did I? All right. Well, let's assume I did. What the hell? It's a bit early in the week to get pummeled. Triple strike. And hit him with that double defend. All right. That giant debuff turn is effectively just my opportunity to get mad damaging up in here. Let's go rupture, rupture, rupture. Rupture farms. Uh, in flame? And then pummel reaper for good measure. Nope. Go for another elite. Ooh, another shot. Beautiful. Uh... Anachronic. Anachronic. Oh, right. I, for some reason, it just wasn't making sense in my mind. Right, because it's anachronic, right? Because you, uh, it might be pronounced uh, anachronic, but you say anachronism, which is to say something outside of its own time or displaced in time. Uh, whenever you lose HP from enemy attacks, delay half of it to the end of your next turn. I definitely want Ornamental Fan whenever you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. I mean, that's just... That's just good block. Uh, probably want to remove maybe a defend here. No, but I get real defensive occasionally. What? You don't think I get real defensive? I get really defensive. Fight me. Uh, <laughs> I'm having fun. Uh, <laughs> let's lose a Reaper. We don't need that much more healing. We're about to finish out the game. It took me a second to remember the word game. <laughs> uh. What double? I... <sighs> okay. I, I need to stop taking things that give me randomized effects. 
baffled. Not because they can't be good, but because when I can't tell where an effect came from, it really confuses me. And I need to spend all of what little brain power, admittedly, I have uh, to focus on the game and speaking. And breathing! I forgot breathing! <gasps> The Ghost of Rhapsody will now be playing for the rest of this episode. Got creative AI at the start of your turn. Add one random power card into your hand. Let's go Blaze Potion here. We got... Only one thing from that? We got a, a Barricade. We got Barricade. But it was two, right? Blaze Potion gives you two? That's from my Oldie Smooth Stone. That's from my Plated Armor. That's from my Bronze Scales. Uh, that's from my Mutagenic Strength. That's from my Fossilized Helix. Yeah, okay, so I'm missing one here. It's all good, though. It's all good, man. Drop a blood guard? Do need to be defending. Also need to be killing these frontliners at some point if I uh if I can. Alright, fine. I don't know, I think it's just gonna be interesting to deal 21 damage to all of my enemies every single turn. quirky like that. Hmm. So we're definitely going to be going Reaper first. Ooh, hit the Awakened One with that uh, double blood for blood. Why right, it would have died at the end of the turn. There's my barricade, but it's not really needed. <clears throat> Already got me one of those. And... All right, we're a wee bit short. But that's okay. I think we'll do fine. Anyway. Let's drop him with the blood for blood. Alright. Hell yeah. That was a pretty smooth episode. I I now know that Devious Bottling is my mortal nemesis. It's not... It wasn't even bad. Like, almost every other energy relic would have cost me more. But because it had randomized effects, it just really threw me. Um, so I, I, I'll probably go with the other one next time. Although I didn't necessarily know which one that... Or rather, what that one did. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slave the Spy. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my contents of the game, past, present, and future, as well as a individual link to Vexmod, considering the fact that Vexmod is the most recent installed as of this episode. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a mod list in the description down below, but there's also the Steam Workshop Collection, which is, I guess, the mod list nowadays. The Steam Workshop Collection that contains all of the mods played in this series, past, present, and future. Not just the ones that are current for this episode. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you... around.